Day eight, um, we have the burner phone. So before we go any further, um, we haven't got the stainless hammer though, have we? Where is it? Oh, I thought I'd seen somebody with it in their hands this morning. No, all right, well, if we haven't got it, John might have it in his van, but that is the burner phone number. 07586209596. All I want from you, right, is a WhatsApp message with the six digit number. I don't want your name, I just want to see your phone number and then the message, um, which is will be the six digit number. Just show them the number again for the brand for the burner for the Brandon phone. The burner phone, yeah? Right, so you'll have a chance of winning the Sternless Hammer, and how we're gonna do that is what I'm gonna do, I am gonna pick randomly one person out of all the people who WhatsApp me. Um, a message and don't ring the number because we won't be answering it um, and what I'll do I'll randomly pick a number and I'll ring you I'll tell you what day I'm going to ring you we'll probably the last day of the build and if you answer within five rings then you will win the Sternos Hammer and if you don't answer within five rings it will go on to the next person so that's that right we insulated yesterday um, Tom the plasterer is coming tomorrow you can see there I've tucked all the cables back up into the ceiling we're now going to put the vapor barrier on um, there's much debate as to whether or not this actually benefits in any way whatsoever. Um, the report said it had very little benefit. Um, if anything, it helped with air tightness. So it's up to you if you want to put it on. We always put it on, um, without a doubt. But, you know, you're never going to get a perfect seal if you're going down that road. So it's up to you what you want to do. Right, so I've stretched it out longer than room. What I'm going to do now, I honestly find this is a lot easier if you do it on your own rather than everybody else trying to grab hold of it. We have a stapler, it's a DeWalt one, it's pretty decent, although they tell me it's jamming now. Is it jamming, Brandon? Yeah. Right, so what I want to do, I want to pull it so it's just a bit longer than the room. And I'm going to try and get this up in one go by myself. Will you just move that sign, Brandon? It's, um, it's gone up actually, this used to be about 20 odd pounds, I think it's 40 odd pounds now. We get ours from the cell calls. Like I say, it's up to you if you want to use it. The report did say it had very little benefit. Do what? Falling down. That's all right. It, has, it is a bit of a pain to put up, to be fair, isn't it? Yeah, it will stop working. It's not that, Brandon. Have you got a screw or something to pull it out? Because it's jammed in there. Alright, I've got it out. Like I said, you're not going to get it completely hole free because you are going to cut your lights and all and you can go to there for taping up the light wells as well but we've done that before and what's happened is the tape ended up just peeling off by itself so that was pretty pointless and you're going to puncture it when you screw it out yeah but i suppose anything is better than nothing right so that's that one up there you can still see through this one um there is a green one i think it comes from screw fix which you can't see through the joist, which is a bit of a pain. So what we'll do now, um, like I say, it doesn't have to be tight. So you think about it, when your plasterboard goes up, it pushes it up anyway. So we're gonna do the full walls and then we've got to nip off and get some plasterboards. Right, we're gonna plasterboard the ceiling now. Um, we plasterboard with 12 and a half mil square edge plasterboards because we get somebody to come and skim it. Now you can actually get a 12 and a half tapered edge. The square edge basically is what it says, that it's got a square edge. The tapered edge is like that. And then what happens is then you put another tapered edge board to it. And then that gets taped there and then filled there. So you don't have to um, plaster it, but we don't go down that road. We like to skim ours. Um, we will be using 38 mil, or are they 45s in the collated gun? That's a 38 mil jit rock screw. Um, but I'm going to show you how to put them in and how far they should go in. It should turn box somewhere, Brennan. Oh, we're going to use the collated screws. 45 They're 45 mil. Um, I did buy that 
and I was told not to bite with loads of people, they said it was crap. Um, it has started to jam to be fair, um, and I do clean it regularly, but we'll see how that goes. Um, or failing that, we'll be using the uh, Makita, what's the bit called, Dilly? PH. PH, yeah, PH2. Um, so that's it, so what we're going to do now is, I'm going to mark up where the roof timbers are, because once it's boards up, I won't be able to see them. What Brandon's already done, he's already measured from the front of the building, the board is 2,400 long. He's measured from the front to, that one Brandon, is it? I think so. Yeah, yeah I, th I think about two, four fell about there. So obviously you want your joint on your timber. So he's already pre-cut that. We're putting, machine. that's the machine edge, look. And it's got tapes there, you can see it there, yeah. And that's the open machine edge as well. So we're gonna put the cuts to the wall. So the idea is that do your ceiling first, and then when you put your wall boards up, you can push your wall boards up tight to the ceiling so you've got very little gap there and you'll just have a gap on the floor, which obviously won't get plastered. Right, Brandon, are we ready? Are we gonna go for the collated one first and see if it works, and if not, um, I'll put, throw that tune out. I'll put a few of these in my mouth just in case the collated one doesn't work. But generally, four screws will hold the plaster board up, and the plaster board weighs approximately 22 to 25 kilo. But we'll have a look and see how much these ones weigh. Right, you ready? You in? Yeah. <clears throat> Right, so that's it. So you can see, you can see the line. Let's draw the line, David, so you can see it and get Sharpie out. You can see the sort of line there. Let's see if we can draw that relatively straight. That's where the timber is. Again, that's where the timber is. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fix along that line. Um, I like to do them a little bit closer on the ceiling. Probably about every 200, but you get nothing out of doing them too close, you actually make it weaker. Well, there, I mean, that's not jammed that time, um, but I do clean it. It did jam a couple of times, nobody said it had jammed straight away, but it's not doing too bad. So what he's going to do now, he's going to, he's already measured that. How much gap he left, Brandon? Uh, five mil, so it So he's measured there, he's left a five mil gap. So that it'll definitely go in, because even though there's a five mil gap, when that 12 and a half mil board goes up tight to there, it will conceal that gap, which is what your plasterer wants. So basically, the off cut of that board then, will go over there, very much like the floor, very much like the roof. Cut it, off cut over there if you can go. And what I don't like to do, so we'll have a joint there obviously. When this next board goes up, I like to space my joint two bays, so that we're no risk of it cracking across like that, um, although we've never had a crack either. And the guy did say, um, before, I get my breath. Um, a guy said that if it scrims properly, you ain't gonna get cracks. And I guess Tom, our plasterer, does scrim it properly because we never do get cracks. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna board the roof and then we're gonna mark out for the lights and I'm gonna show you the lights and I'm gonna show you the cut out for the lights as well. Right, so what we've decided to, or Brandon's decided to anyway, because we've got glass over there and we don't wanna be breaking it, what we're gonna do is like half the ceiling, get this, wall boarded. We'd normally do the ceiling first, but we're gonna board this wall and get the glass over here so we've no risk of breaking it. So I just wanna show you this. Um, this is how you need to be putting one of these rock screws in. Um, if you just come here, David, you'll have to come close, right? So what, what it needs to do is, is go in. Right, can you see it now? Is it, you got a close up there? Yeah. Right, what, see it's, it's just compressed the paper and it's below the surface. What you don't want to do is break it like, there. Can you see how that's broken the paper and gone through? Yeah. Which one are you looking at? That one, the bottom one. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so that's wrong. That's right. It should be just just compress the paper. Uh, see that one's broke it there completely. Look, yeah. Whereas this one here, 
I just compressed it, yeah? So that's what you're looking for, that's the fix. And what I did, just like the ceiling marking out the timbers, I've marked the, um, the studs as well. So when we push these boards up, I know where the stud is. Um, and what I'll do, you can see the laser there. I just put the laser on it and I'll be able to see where the studs are. Um, the Milwaukee gun start, Milwaukee, the Makita gun started jamming straight away, but it wasn't actually the gun, I, the, the setting was wrong on it, but I've adjusted that now and it works now. So Brandon, just pop that up now. See if Brandon can lift it. No, no, one hand. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Right, you take the camera, watch Jamie do it. <laughs> There's a bit of a skill to doing this, because John can't do it at all, can he? It's a shame he's not here. I have my gloves on it, it's just easier than that. It's... Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is easier with gloves on. Right, I tell you what then, you screw it, get four screws in it, right? There you go. Get far down that line there. Just sink them there, yeah? So four screws will be enough to carry a 25 kilo board. There might be 22 of these, I'm not sure they vary. So they've cut this, this roof pitches like that, to exaggerate it, yeah, it pitches at an angle, but Brandon's measured it. And what he's also done, he's took 20 mil off the bottom. The reason why we take 20 mil off the bottom is so that when we board, so our, our wall will be like that, there'll be a 20 mil gap, that'll be 20 mil. And then when we put our laminate floor on, we will still leave the manufacturer's recommended gap there, but we've also got another 12 and a half mil if the floor wants to expand more than that to go under the plasterboard. So that's why we leave ours up 20 mil. Right, the ceiling's all plasterboarded now, and Liam or Brad, one of them, has been kind enough to put two marks on either side. I think these are 700 That's from correct. the wall in, and then we've got one over this side also. So what we're gonna do to join these two lines together is we're going to use a string line, and I'm gonna ping a line from one side to the other, and that'll give me a nice straight line. Uh, it's actually a chalk line. <laughs> Thank you, Liam. Right, you want to hold that My, there, my camera works the worst. I'll just cut your head off then. Sorry. Right, so I'm going to hold it onto that line there. John's going to give it on that line. He's going to pull you the chalk line. You pull it nice and taut. Um, and then give it a nice pink. And as you can see, which Liam will show you, you've got a nice red line or whatever colour chalk line you have along the ceiling. Liam has now, if you just show here, has put the measurements from the, for the lights from the left hand side where the doors are to the back of the building. So all I have to do is go along and put a little mark at 575, 1270, 1930. Liam's going to hold the tape for me. And I'm just going to, he's going to shout me them measurements as well because I won't be the same. So the first thing is 575. Be very critical here now that you don't make a mistake because he's boarded all the ceiling. What's that? 1270. 1270, uh, let's get it right. Do not do your 100 mil rule here, double Na check. 1930, John. 1930, correct, yeah. I think it's 2590, oh, but it could be a four. Let me just come and have a look. 2590, oh, that looks like a nine to me. See if it's in line with that other one uh, you've cut out. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll double check. 2590. Oh. 2590. Oh. 3285. 3285. Right, let me just check that. Yeah, it's a nine. It's, nine. it's in line with that other one. Right. Isn't it? So Liam just thought that somebody had wrote the nine wrong, but they haven't. Right. So if Liam just shows you now, we've got X marks the spot. We just need to drill all them holes and our lights will be perfect. Uh, here we go. We're going to use the Milwaukee drill, which sometimes comes loose. What, here. You, what, what, what are you cutting out with? It's an old, so what size is it? I can't remember I think what size it's it is. It's uh, 60, it'd be the outside of it. It's a bizarre size. Yeah, let me put HD on. Have a look. You can probably see it. It's, it is there, look. I'll put my 57 mil. 57 mil. Put my Do you want to show one of the lights, John, as well? Yeah, do you want me to do a last show first? Uh, show us the light first. I've put one behind you. Already open. So these are... These lights are IP65 rated. They're also fire rated. Stand back a little bit. Oh. That's it, that's it. 
These lights are IP65 rated, they're also fire rated and they're also easy insulation as per the box. So I'll just give you a little look at these. They're absolutely fantastic, Liam's just got them. They're a sealed unit, so they're all sealed. So you one. can't change the bulb? I don't think you can, can you not change the bulb? No you can't, but does it get five year warranty or that's something correct, like yeah. that? Aren't it? And that's probably on all the time, this is only going to be on certain times you may get longer and um, we've got this little piece here which is where you put your cable which I will show you when I cable them up and the, the Wago connectors they're a type of a Wago thing, yeah they're they're you, pre you can just press put it in and let go what I will say when you use these you want to use a pretty long stinger otherwise they don't grab very well what's the stinger it's the end of the cable but again when I come to wire them up I will explain that into more detail so now I'm going to drill the hole for these Will you just start at the back please John, just because I can't get any further back in this room. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to drill this hole and it's very important, I know Liam's probably showed you on the previous I video. Didn't, I didn't, I didn't. He's put the cables up above, so if I go straight through and go straight up, there's a chance that I can smack the cable. So I'm going to go through, don't, not panicking, as soon as I feel it go through I'm going to pull back, which I'll show you now. Now you see that little bit there? Then we just give the drill a little shake and just check this Milwaukee. How did you get the plastic bit out? I just give it a shake and just give it like a spin and a stop. Are you in reverse or forward? No, just forward. I'm just sort of jerking it on and off and, you, and it chucks a uh, piece of plaster board out of it. You see that? As soon as it goes through. It's really easy to do. You, you want to drill nice and stable. You don't want to wobble your drill. Just stay still. Drill. As soon as it goes through. Back off. I'll just show you now, look, and the cable's just there and I've not hit it. Right, I'll just finish these off now. Yeah. And there you go. That's the lights. The line all pinged. They're all in the correct position. They're now ready for the plasterer to come and skim and all the cables, we will push the cables up so when the guy plasters it they're not in his way and then we'll just grab them and pull them back down. What I will say when you've done them all, check that your cables are there just in case you have made a mistake and you can pull the board down and redo it again. Thank you. Right, we're in the storeroom now so we're going to have put the membrane on the ceiling and on the sides. Um, we're going to do the ceiling first. What, what I've done is marked out for this light so I've already pre-drilled it into my OSB. This sheet is um, 1200, now Liam's already took into account the size of the room so we can just put the OSB straight in. Um, so we're just going to stick this whole piece in now and just piece up the rest of it in a second. We're using a, is it, what's it called? Liam again? A PN nailer. You'll have to Coil nailer. We've, we've come in opposite way haven't we? Sorry. Yeah. Let, let her in there, Brendan. That's right, yeah. Which way now? No, no. Let, this way. Let her in. Yeah. David, can you see her? Yeah. Right. Tuck under. We're good. So we've got it tight. That corner's not in, Brendan. What? Flip it up that corner there. That's you in? Uh, on it'll go yeah, the belt. that's it. We'll go over the belt. Right, so we've got our laser in. You're on Where the beam. It? I'm on the beam. I'm just going to stick... Push it, push it up. Yeah, I'm going to push it up with my gun. Right, so we've got a laser where the um, roof joist is. I'm just going to go along this line now. Uh, roughly about every three, 300, 400. We're using the laser so there's no marks then on the OSB. Go slightly to that side. Can you see how to put the laser slightly off? Yeah. Right. So yeah, so we put the writing up as well, so you can't see no writing, no marks. So I'm gonna do this next choice now. This is what we're using. I've got to worry up because laser's gonna go ahead, but I'll quickly show you what nails they are. This is right. Yeah, go on, you're good. It's a PPN, it's not a PPN nailer. It's not, it's, it's a coil nailer. coil nailer. There you go. Um, we got it given, to be fair, um, by Hardy, Hardy BL, wasn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, when we did the, um, the boards. It's a bit of a bugger to line this up, but there you go, you're good. Yeah. Right, okay, so... It 
just provides a lot neater finish than screwing. You're going to walk into it later. What you'll do and all, sorry to interrupt. If you remember from last time, David, just coming here, from I think it might have been yesterday's, we put some practices on top of the stud wall. So as you're going to go down now and nail that, so that will tie that into the wall. And of course, we've plasterboarded it and tied that into the wall as well. I was literally just going to say about the patch just before we uh, membraned it. One minute, John, please. Don't take that gun off before it's tied, okay? Yeah. And then you've got a timber down there, but you're going to have to guess that, look. It's approximately 30 mil, but you can guess all the way down. Yeah. So, so what she'll do, so it's 11 mil OSB, provides a good finish for a storeroom, or if you've got a workshop, or even a gym, I suppose. There's always good fixing places then. What we will have is a strip light running down there, probably a four foot strip light. You can see John's put the packs in, but I'm going to explain practices to you in a minute. Jen, is this just, where our box is going? Yeah, just explain that laser there. So we've got a different laser here. It's just a um, did well two line laser, isn't it? Red one. Um, but when she puts these sheets up again, because I don't want no markings on where the timbers are, so I just show what you'll do there. She's going to mark the floor where the uh, stud is. Mark the floor where the stu <coughs> stud is. Excuse me. <coughs> Mark halfway where the stud is. And is that you or me, John? Line yeah. it up and that. then you can see there, look, the laser then, just like, she'll know where to nail then and there'll be no markings on the OSB board, basically. So it's as simple as that. So this will get fully lined in OSB. It's got the membrane on. It's got the insulation on. We always insulate as well, simply because if the customer wants to take down this wall in the future, it's got a fully insulated room. Um, it's a and little it's bit what? of an extra. Um, you don't have to vapor barrier this wall, but we, we choose to just for an... It's a little bit of an over-engineering, but you don't have to vapor barrier that wall. Right, I'm going to fit this window. Um, I'll explain why I'm going to fit it a, a little bit later once I have fit it. We num normally fit them before it gets plastered. But I've, um, I've done some of it, so I'm going to have to get it fit so that I can plaster it successfully. Right, the window is 1200. I'm not going to make the same mistake I made before and cut it wrong. I'll double check that. This will be the fastest least explained window demonstration for a while. John, will you just put your hands on that? Just take weight of it, please. You're all going to melt it all now, aren't you? Yeah. Right, well, in a minute, you can, yeah? <laughs> all right. You can see there, look, it's got drain holes in. So when this frame goes on there, any rain that goes in there will go down that drain hole. It will come out that drain hole there. So it's important that you dam your sill properly. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna dam it now. These are the two end caps here. Let me show you the end caps. Yeah. Right, so what I'm gonna do is, go on John, you're good. Yeah, yeah, I know you will, yeah. I'm gonna fill that with silicon. And then pop the end cap on like that, which covers the cut end. Give it a little tap. And then get myself a wipe and get rid of that silicon. So all that silicon I put in there will now stop any water, any rainwater coming out into the build and it'll go where it's supposed to and designed to go. So that's that, that's cleaned off there. Just wet that bit there. And then I'm gonna do my other one as well. Exactly the same procedure. Fill that with silicon. And cap on. We will talk in more detail about fitting doors and windows, but what's happening now is Tom, the plasterer, is coming tomorrow, so this room has to be finished, and he does like to get an early start in. He's coming first thing, is he, John? Yeah, beer at R7, so if this room ain't cleared and empty for him, he's not going to be a happy bunny. Um, and we like to keep him happy because he never lets us down. Right, are you all right, John? Right, so that's that's dammed, yeah? 
I fully silicon them up so any water that goes in there isn't going to come out of there and come into the room. Can I have that laser now, please? What I'm going to do now is just get this laser and see if this sill's level. Right, right. so I'm going to have a look see if this, um, this timber I put in yesterday is dead level. So, 128, 129, 128, 129. And it is. Whoever put that in was an absolute... Genius. Right, what I'm going to do now is I want to make sure, first of all, like I say, this is going to be quick, I'm going to make sure that's going to fit before I do anything. And it is, yeah, I'm happy with that, fits in, sits on nice. Um, the only problem is I am bearing up for some reason. So, what I'm going to have to do is have a look, and it's that slate lap. See, that slate lap was put on yesterday, it's a bit of OSB there as well. Look, I'm going to have to get a multi tool, clean that OSB off, and make sure that I'm completely flat and level so that my sill can sit level. Right, I've set this sliding square because what I want is my window to be parallel to my opening. So I'm going to draw two lines there. And that's where I want my windowsill to come up to them two lines. Four lines, in fact. Yeah, but it's straight. It's not going to deviate. Right, so we're good there. Um, blah, 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 silicon. Right. Sorry about this being rushed, but like I said, Tom's coming tomorrow. It's, have we got another two? Out. I'm putting a full bead of silicon on there and I'll put a big old lump there, big old lump there. Yeah, and that's where my sill's gonna go. <clears throat> a couple of screws. Now, I know that my sill, the actual structural opening sill is level, so I'm happy with that. And I'll flunk that on there, get it dead in line with them lines I put, and then I'm gonna send that straight through. The thermal break. Now I always go through thermal break. I know some people don't like it, but there's many a window fitter. That tells me it's absolutely fine. You're not gonna actually break the sill there, it's not a weak point at all. It's absolutely solid. What I'm gonna do then is put me some cell some silicon over there, over them screw heads. So no water will go through that thermal break. But you did see me dam the thermal break at the beginning, didn't you? Just put that like that. Yeah, so any water that goes in there now will go down them pre-drilled drain holes. Horrible stuff. Yeah, so it can't actually come back into the room now. So all that's what I'm gonna do now is go get my window and see if my window will go in. Yeah. Um, Right, so that's that's in, that's silicon. What I'm going to do now is put a little bead against this backstop here, just so when that window goes on, it pushes up and seals against that. Um, John and Brandon are going to lift it in, I'm going to guide it in, and then I'm going to explain as to why I'm fitting this window now. I'm not after it's being plastered. Okay. All right. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, right. They're holding window in, so I've reset, reset that rather because obviously that goes in further than that little thing. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get and then just to hold that there. Yeah, I'm going to now pop a little wedge in there. Just I want to go back a bit, no. yeah, just one minute. Let me get a screw started, brother. Right. And what I'll do, right. what I'm going to do now is hold that there. I'll out to your touch, brother. Right, hold it there. Yeah, right, don't, don't let go of it though, it'll fall out, yeah? Do the same on this side. And then what Jen will do then, she'll trap the window in for me on that side. And then everybody can let go of it then. Isn't it me, John? Yeah. Right there. Right, I'll give Jen two screws and if David goes out she'll be able to see her trapping it in now with slate buttons. Just straight across the face of it Jen. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I know there'll be a bit of a wobble in it but I'll pull it into me when I fix it. And one on the other side then. 
Right, so I put some packers behind there to stop it pulling across. What I'm going to do now is just send the screw in through there. And pull it tight to my wedge. And then, I know then, that that definitely ain't going to fall out now. So what I need to do now is get a laser on the side of that and just see if we're good. And then put the laser on the side of the window. In fact, it doesn't matter where I put it, to be fair. What I'm going to do, look, is there, look, I'm just going to stick there, look. It's about 13 mil on there. Uh, it's slightly more there. So what it wants, it wants another packer sending in there. A little two mil packer should squeeze it out enough. Again. And re-measure that and make sure that's plumb. 12 there. 12 there. So we're good there. So what I need to do now is get some packers in the bottom. And then we know we're square then. And the same with this side, we'll do exactly the same, although it's a little bit different because that's a fixed sash, is that? Yeah. So we're going to have to screw through the thermal brake on that and go a little bit of an angle just to pull it across. But because that's a square window and it's aluminium, it isn't going to warp. So I'm going to see what kind of pack I can get in there. It's a bit shy. So is that. That'll do, mate. And what I want to do is make sure that I'm pulling that window into the room. Yeah. And same on the bottom as well, but although that doesn't really want to get a packer in there. Yeah, we'll slide the green in there. And four fixings will be enough for that. Right, so that's it, that's fixed. It's going to hold along the bottom there. What I'm going to do now is scrape this off here and I'm going to explain to you why. I like to fit that window at such haste. Um, I will explain here. Get rid of that. Give that a wipe and clean it off. If you don't clean this off now, it's bugger to get off later. I don't know what we did before Wonder Wipes. What did we do before Wonder Wipes, John? I've got to go up on the air. John, yes, what did we do before Wonder Wipes? Um, well, did you get silicon off your hands? Don't you remember? I don't know. Um, well, they're great. So that's the window. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to form the head and the sides and any gaps. and I'll rely on the silicon to hold that in, which it will do. I've experienced with that before, so that's absolutely fine. Right, what I did yesterday, and the reason why I have to fit this window now is, so my roof was pitched like that to exaggerate, yeah? I cut out my opening, and I took the structural opening size from this size, and of course that size was too small, which I failed. If things don't always go right, and that's the thing with us, you'll get to see everything, and how we um, get over it as well. Thanks, Brendan. Um, so what I had to do, I had to chase some of that out. So now I'm going to put a piece of OSB in there and create a new head on it so that I can OSB it successfully and have it all tidy. These, these can come off now and I'm going to um, plasterboard the reveals as well. And what we're also going to do and all, um, there's a sill to go on here. So we're probably going to put two layers of plasterboards just to get up past that, that up stand there. Um, two layers will probably get to there. And then when we put our sill on, it'll go nicely on there. So that's it. Right, we have to be here. Right, so this is the last wall to be boarded. It's a dividing wall, and the reason why we've insulated this is because there's no heat in the storeroom, so this will still be a relatively cold wall because we've got a cold room in there. Um, this is a patras. It's just an off-cut of flooring, but Brendan's cut it there to fit in between, um, and that will carry the brackets. We know the heat is going here. John's going to cut out the, the uh, fuel spur, and he's going to explain that in a minute. So when, the, when we come to fit this bracket, We'll have a fuel spur there and we know there's some good fixings in there. And what I've done as well, I've just there's another one of them behind there. I've just put a couple of screws in it. 
And the reason why I've done that is it just pulls that board back to that. So like that there, where Brendan has not put it quite flush. Yeah, it's pulled the board back to it. So when we put the bracket on it, if the board's sticking out a little bit, and when we pull it back, it'll pop the plaster board head and screws. So that's why I'm going to do that. So John's going to cut that and he's going to explain that to you now. Right. So this I'm using a single back box, dry lining back box. If you see these X's on the wall here, these are what I've just put on because Liam has run a cable. Can you see it over here? Yeah. So it's running through this false wall and it ends about here and it's for the fuel spare for the heater. Can I just, just sorry to interrupt, just tell them that you're going to explain about the cables. Oh, yeah, possibly. yeah, yeah. And what Liam says, I have run a few cables but tomorrow I'm going to take you round and show you what I've done and explain to you why I've done it. So that'll be coming tomorrow. So now I'm going to cut out this back box. We've put the X's on here and if you look closely you'll see where this spur is going to go. There's no screws. Liam starts to put one in here but we managed to catch him right quick and there's no screws in that point so we know we're not going to screw through the cable now our sockets go 350 mil to the top from the floor so i put a tiny little mark here which is 350 mil off the floor that wants to be the top of this back box i'm now going to get my spirit level and i'm going to level it off and draw myself a little obviously david you won't better get fully in because i'm going to be in way here but Somewhere there. I'm fully aware that the building regs are 450 to the bottom of the socket, but these buildings are not covered by them. Um, they just look absolutely insane, a socket 450 high. I appreciate it's for wheelchair access, but you wouldn't get a wheelchair into this room anywhere without a ramp. And if we were building one for disabled access, we'd put the sockets at a different height. So I've now, sorry, I've now used my plumb line, what I've just done, and put the top of this dry lining box to the top. I'm now going to draw around the socket using a sharp pencil. What I forgot to tell you, I also plumbed a line up here because we know that we want the fuse spur to start there and go on that side so that you won't see it now but when I put the heater on, Liam's cut out an hole in the joist in the wall so that the, so that the cable can run behind the wall and in through here so the heater looks cableless but it's not, the cable's actually Just to yeah. explain what he's saying there, so if, if that's my my, um, my stud in my wall, what I've actually done was chop out a section like that. So we've got rid of all that. So when he pushes that cable in, like he says, he'll be able to feed it through and you won't actually see the cable. Which we will show you when I come to do the heat, it'll probably make more sense if it doesn't now. It's going to be a bit of noise now, I'm afraid. <laughs> So we've now got a nice hole cut in the wall and behind here, I know that to my left, are you ready David? And grab it, I nice and neatly tucked it out of the way. So I don't know if David can see, but behind here is what Liam was just talking about in this hole is where he cut the joist out. So when the heater's on, I can drill an hole here, thread the heater cable behind here and all this will be just cable. This will look fantastic. Uh, right, I'll just quickly bang this in. Put some up. To be honest, you don't want to go too crazy because this is going to come back out. Um, I can push a bit of that in there. What we do before the plasterer comes, we found out it's good uh, practice to put tape over these yellow lugs. Find the end, and it stops plaster going in. Just come a bit closer and watch this, David. It doesn't have to be really neat. You just put that over there and that over there because the plaster will just skim straight over that. Fill it with plasterer, plast plasterer. Fill it with plaster. <laughs> Fill it with plaster. And then when you've got these bad boys on, you can just pop it all out, pull that, and your screws are going neatly. Not neatly. Thank you. You got all else to say, Liam? Oh, we got. No, right, so. All right. So another rush one today, I'm afraid. Um, sometimes it is, sometimes it ain't. Don't forget the burner phone is now live. Uh, there's the burner phone number. 
Yeah, if you've seen the six digit number throughout this build so far, then you need to message me on WhatsApp. I don't want any other message. I don't want your name. I just want your phone number and the um, the six digit number and you've been with a chance of winning this sternless hammer. So once again, WhatsApp message, that's all I want, yeah? Um, and what we will do then, we will randomly pick a number, we'll ring it, if it doesn't answer in five calls, we'll go on to the next number, but somebody will take on that sternless hammer. So don't forget the links, uh, the nomination for char most charitable business of the year. If you could nominate us for that, that would be fantastic. If you want a build pack, if you want a build to this quality, which I have no doubt in my mind is the best build quality in this country. If you want a build to this quality with a full materials list and full instructions and you need a build pack, there's 13 different sizes. And what else is it? The raffle. The raffle's gone over 14,000 now, so it's well on its way to 20,000. Once it gets to 20,000, we'll draw it and somebody will either get 20 grand cash or win the pod. We'll know the other so that's it please hit the subscribe please hit the bell button so you know when our next videos are coming up but hopefully we'll have one every day for you and that's it we'll see you tomorrow which is thursday tom's going to come and skim um what we will probably do is probably fit the door to the store cupboard finish board in the store cupboard do some electrics we're going to put the metal on the back as well so you'll see us cut the angles on the metal as well um we do use a nibbler but we'll talk about other methods um and other things that you could go down the road of as well um and what else we'll be doing david that'll probably be it well it's tomorrow oh we might run the cable to the house which is a bit of a nightmare because he's got a porcelain patio uh, but we'll try and cross that bridge tomorrow okay so thanks for watching we'll see you tomorrow Right, you've wanted a garden room as a raffle prize for some time now. Now the logistics of doing the garden room as a prize for like, let's say you live in London, then I've got to get the full team down there, I've got to put the team up, I've got to get the materials down there, or even if you live further, af further afield, yeah? So what I've done, what we've come up with is this garden pod, and I'm gonna give you this pod, it's the prototype, and I'm gonna let you have it for as little as two pound. So this will be your pod, pod, pod raffle. Not a pad. This will be your pod raffle. So if you want to walk a little bit closer, tickets will be £2. They are live as as from. If you're watching this video, they're live. If the pod is not suitable for you, it's 3.7 long. It's just over 2.5 wide. I will give you £20,000 in cash as an alternative. So even if you've got a pod, you're halfway through a pod. A pod. So even if you've got a pod or you're halfway through... Even if you've got... a even if you've got a garden room or you're halfway through your own build and you don't want one, then you're not going to say no to £20,000 for the sake of £2. Right, I'm going to show you around this pod. It's a prototype. This is what will be going forward. I am going to offer this for sale as a fixed unit. I am going to give you it for £2, possibly, in a raffle. And I'm also going to offer you a build pack. Bank. All that is going to come in the future. So let's talk about it first. Here, feature wall. What I wanted to try and create, because it was quite a small room, I want to give you some depth. And the reason why I'm moving that away is, obviously, you've got them shelves. They're oak veneered MDF, and they've got oak lippings on. And in here is your consumer unit and your drivers. Yep, so that's all hidden away. It's concealed, and it's nice and tidy. Let's walk around the walls first. Feature wall. Again, little room. I'm trying to give you a bit of depth, a bit of depth to the room. So I've added this slatted wall, and I've blended it in with our, what we do in quite a lot of our builds, the cedar wall lighting. Let's talk about lighting now, right? In the roof, let me see if we can get these switches right. Yeah, we've got LED strips in the roof with a brass trim on there. In the wall, we've got LED strips in the wall. Right, so all the lights are independent. Um, at the bottom here, we've got a solid brass overlay skirting board, solid brass, you'll have to get the brass OR on that. And it's also got a nice soft glow light on there as well. All the electrical components sockets and switches are also brass as well right so all the sockets are brass i'm going to show you the internet connection i'm going to show you the power connection that will, will come as standard with this we've got a few spur there as well because the more anal of you will be looking for the heater in this build and if john just has a look there we've got underfloor heating in the build right so that's the build there is no plaster in this build the theory behind that is when it's lifted i don't want no cracks so that's where we're going to go forward with this with panelled walls and loads of feature walls basically bifold doors Aluminium, the from Express bifolds, we always fit these, and of course, if they don't fit with that one finger glide, then they ain't this kind of quality. We'll have a walk around there now as well. We have put the logo on this one because we're super proud of it. Yep, it's Western Red Cedar, it's hand selected, and it's been oiled, not as it's been oiled once, it's been oiled three times. In the soffit, we have got down lighters there, brushed, stainless steel, fire rated, and I will explain the build in a minute, but it has got our traditional rubber roof on with UPV fascia as well. 
on the back here, right, we normally go with roofing panels. This building is actually a metal insulated clad building, yeah? So that's a beautiful, nice finish on there. We've got downpipe as well. And if John just comes here, little, little feature there, look. Yeah, we've actually riveted rather than screwed. Yeah, so this is the power, right? So what will happen is I've obviously got it rigged up temporary there to an extension lead. But when we deliver this to your house, yeah, you will have an electrician come and he'll connect it. He'll drop your 10 mil or your six mil, whichever he deems is suitable into there and your internet as well. And that will be you connected up to your power and connected up to your new pod, right? The base, it's aluminium. It's aluminium for a reason because I'm looking for um, lightness really, but I need a lot of stability because this is going to get lifted from the back garden to the front garden so that it can come to one of you guys on the back of a wagon. Underneath you will see, John can just see there, yeah, it's got adjustable feet. Yeah, you can see that kind of, so what will happen is um, it will come to you, you'll either have a pad or you'll have some blocks and they'll all be pretty much level and if they're not pretty much level that'll give you 50 mil. Um, adjustment in it and we'll level it for you when we get it lifted into your house. Right, so that's your pod. Um, it's 3.7 by 2.5, just slightly over 2.5. It's £2 a ticket. There's 25, no there's not, there's 20,000 pounds cash alternative, right? If you don't want the pod, then you need to enter anyway because you could be taking on this cash. If you do want the pod, right, this is the important bit. If you want the pod, yeah, You've got to make sure that I can get it into your garden by means of a crane or a high ab. So if you live on a corner and we can get it over the hedge on a high ab, that's great. Or if you live on a street, have a look outside, see if you've got any telegraph wires in the way, see if we can get a crane and see if we can lift it over the top of your house, which is what's going to happen with this sometime this week. It's going to go from back garden to front garden, ready for delivery to you guys. And if you win it and then you do decide that we can't get it to you, you can just take on the cash instead. So for your two pound, I'm not only going to give you this fantastic top of the range pod, I'm also going to give you everything you see in it. And the only thing you're not going to get is the MacBook, John or Jen. They don't come with it. You get all the books, all the plants, all the shelves, the light, you get the TV, you get the table, you get the chair and you get the computer desk and chair as well. Everything you see except these three. Yeah. And me as well, obviously. Right. Two pound. It's live now. You need to smash this out of water.